Hey YouTube, we are going to paint a room. We're, we're actually going to paint our whole house and this should be a series because I don't know how long it's going to take us to paint a room and paint a whole house so there might be many parts to this video. Here are some of the things we are using. Got most of the stuff from Home Depot. We got a, a hawk and a roller with this microfiber, some sheetrock 45 canvas cloth, the sander extension for the roller, some tray things. The internet said to use disposable ones. And we are going with this Wooster brand because when we were looking on Reddit, they said to use Purdy, but they didn't sell that at Home Depot. And supposedly Wooster is pretty good. Here's another thread saying the Wooster products are probably going to be good enough to paint with. And we are going to follow Jeff Thorman from Home Renovision DIY. He has a lot of subscribers. We love his videos. And one night at dinner, we watched this 40 minute video on how to paint and we are going to try and follow as best as we can. So this room will be our main focus and according to the video, we want to move everything out. And luckily we haven't moved in. We're still living with my parents. So there's not too much stuff here, so this step should be pretty easy. We got all the stuff out, and Allie is working on getting those closet doors out. And then drop cloth time. We got the closet doors out, but there is these nails that I'm kind of struggling with and I should probably try to YouTube how to get the nails out and then one more here. So I ended up just twisting it. It damages the drywall a little bit but yeah that worked. Laid out the drop cloth and we are going to start removing all of these things. I think we just unscrew it. That was easy. So I tried sanding this flat, but it's not like as flat as we want, so I think we're gonna have to spackle everything. So we're prepping the walls to be painted and YouTube, Reddit are all talking about the preparation will take the longest and the reason why we're painting is because we have these cracks. So the house was pretty old and I don't think they did a very good job painting. So we're going to try to repair all of that. But Jeff's video doesn't really get into how to repair larger cracks. So I've been following Russ and 
he, he first used the 4 and one tool to widen and is doing a mesh and spackling. So Allie does not like this trim, so we are going to remove it before we paint. And I don't know how to just, I guess I just kind of go at it. And I'm gonna put the nails face down. I don't want to step on the nail. And we're gonna clean these up a little bit. I just twist them out. I don't know if that's like the best way to do it. I've given up on trying to not damage the drywall because everything, everything is so messed up. We're we're gonna we're gonna figure out how to patch that right now, but we'll see. I went to get a ladder. This was on sale at Home Depot for $100, but I needed to get up to the ceiling and we're gonna tape and mud this crack. We have officially scraped down the entire wall and messed up the closet to get ready and plaster and mud all the corners. We are ready to mud and we are starting with this sheet rock 45. It, it was what Jeff used in his how to paint video. Uh, they just they just mixed it 
with some water on this hawk thing. I don't know why it's called a hawk. And there, there are different levels of, of viscosity. They, they all start with what I think is called a volcano. And we'll go, we'll go with that. Jeff did mention in the video that if you use hot water, this will set really, really quickly. And the kind of similar to dentistry. So for all of my dental friends out there watching, this kind of feels like mixing plaster and I guess they're all, oh, this, this is not going good. We're just gonna do this. This is not the right technique. I'm just trying to get everything mixed and incorporated. There are probably a lot of painters out there and drywall people that are just like, this guy, this is so not right. Okay, we need to add more water, but I'm gonna make another volcano because Okay, there's the volcano. It needs to be like a Play Doh y consistency. This is for sure not right. Okay, we need to make another volcano. I want to say this is getting there. But yeah, there are different consistencies for different applications. I don't really know what uh, those are. That's just kind of me being a little lazy and not really doing the research. Um, this is probably going to drive people crazy, but I'm going to save that little piece there because Try not to, try not to waste. But yeah, to me that looks pretty good. This is my first time mixing. But yeah, like in dentistry, this is very, this feels very similar to mixing alginate or mixing greenstone or yellowstone. In dentistry, we really do this flattening out to get all the air bubbles out. I don't think I'm supposed to do that, but I'm just doing that because it's fun. All right, let's get ready to tape. So I'm getting ready to tape and we have two types. We have a fiber mesh tape and then we have a paper drywall tape. So my understanding is the paper drywall is going to do, we're doing all the corners with the paper and then the mesh tapes will get flat surfaces like this that cracked along the drywall. So I'm gonna get the mud with the hawk to add 
faster. I we're gonna need a lot more than this. This is not. We're gonna need a lot more plaster. Good thing I bought a. What is this? 18 pound. Okay, I'm gonna mix some more. Okay, so I got some more mud on here and we are going to use this corner tape and it has a nice fold for us. I'm gonna add it here and then we are going to add some more mud to the corners. Perfect. This part's actually like pretty fun to do. I don't know why. So I'm going to finish this part up and for up here, I'm just going to add a little bit of mud so I could use this mesh wire and have that go there. We're gonna do that for the entire room. So I finished taping this bottom part and I am starting to learn that we do not work fast enough. So this part actually dried up and I'm gonna mix some new mud and get that top section done. So we will probably be getting sheetrock 90 instead of 45.
I think we are pretty much done for today. We taped up all the corners and did some initial spackling. My wife worked on this side and yeah, we got the tape on there. Gonna let it dry, sand tomorrow, and second coat. It's been about a day and the mud should have set. I'm going to start sanding and try to get the second coat on. Going to take a little break. We got, we got internet. But the video I was watching says you want to kind of keep it vertical instead of horizontal like this. So this one. Well, I didn't think there was going to be this much dust and. I've gotten some comments about safety. So I went to the office and I got an N95. And where I'm just gonna try to clean up a little bit so there's not so much dust. Start the next part, which is the taper or tape we put on yesterday. That it's like pulling away in some areas. So I'm just like, I'm just gonna add some water just to see if I can stay. Stick. That's pretty good. Not really. Well, hopefully, this second layer of tapering will get this to sit more flush. So I just noticed our top corner looks really bad and I googled how to finish drywall corner and it looks like we're gonna try to do this first finish coat and then go to lunch after this dries we're going to do a second finish coat and try to follow this yellow and blue pattern so i got my taper spackling thing and we are going to do what the internet page said and just do this wall first and then after lunch we'll get that side all right my first time mudding a corner it's not perfect but i'm pretty happy with that and did all the way down over there got my 
first go done, we're gonna grab lunch and work on that second part. We just got back from lunch and I did the second portion, which is this part while well, this right part dried, this top part while well, this bottom part dried. And the corner is looking pretty good. I did this, this top part while well, the bottom part dried. And we actually really like the Sheetrock 45. It's actually the perfect time now once we are getting better with mixing. And I'm going to stop my video for the first part of painting here because I'm doing research on the third coat. And according to this website, there are five different levels of finish. I think we're like around three or four. And I don't know if we want to get to level five, which involves a skin coat, and that will cover the entire wall. So I'm gonna do research on that. But I think we're just gonna be happy with the level four. 